A relative extremum, right. Let me write it. So here comes for my theory. So again, this is Fermat, Fermat calculus theory. Uh, you may read the book or seen the movie Fermat last theory uh, that was proven proved by Andrew Weil about 350 years after he came up with the theory. It was uh, a theorem that for hundreds of years mathematicians tried to prove unsuccessfully. And then he has also something called Fermat Little Theory, which is uh, one of the keystone of uh, number theory. But um, here also, as I said, one of the uh, contributed to the development of calculus. And here's theory. He said that if f of x has a relative extremum at x equals c, so let's write. And f prime of c exists, kind of important uh, addition, then f prime of c must equal to zero. So f by way of example, I think this will be example three. We're going to verify Fermat theorem for the next uh, for the for the following three functions. There is Fermat with apostrophe and s here a little bit. Uh, uh, I, I ignore that. So f let's verify Fermat's theorem for the following function. A, f of x equals x squared, B, g of x equals x cubed, and C, h of x equals the absolute value of x. Okay. So we are working on the first one, and the first one we are well familiar with this function. It's a parabola. It's the base parabola. Looks like that. And it's obvious that we have a relative minimum as well as absolute minimum at x equals zero. Okay, so we check the derivative. So we do, we are convinced that f of x has a relative extremum, right? just by visual inspection. And f prime, therefore, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and indeed it's equal to 0 uh, when x equals 0. So pretty much we verify, okay? So we can say that we have relative minimum uh, and absolute minimum at x equals zero. All right, so this was a straightforward. Um, the next one on the face of it appear also straightforward. We're looking, uh, well, this one, f of x equals x squared, and now we're looking at g of x equals x cubed. Well, x cubed, again, is a function that we are supposed to be familiar with. It uh, has an this shape, like so. Okay, so this is y equal x cubed. And we are looking at this function, and have considered that this function start at negative infinity, goes to negative infinity. I don't see anywhere an absolute or relative maximum or minimum. But the function, if we go from left to right, we go up all the time, right? We do have a little uh, serpentine here in the middle, uh, about x equals zero. 
but we don't have, we have neither relative uh, maximum nor relative minimum here. But if I take the derivative uh, of g prime, of g of x, g prime of x equal to 3x squared, and if I set it to 0, then I see that when x equals 0, g prime equals 0. So what the heck? Uh, am I contradicting, contradicting Fermat's theorem here? Yeah. Good. Am I contradicting it? On the face of it, I do contradict it because the derivative equals zero at x equals zero, and I don't have a relative. And I don't have a relative. Uh, actually, I said before absolute, but really all we care is the relative because Fermat theorem does not talk about absolute, only about the relative. So let's put the absolute here in parentheses. And here, I don't see relative maximum or minimum. So, it appeared to be a contradiction. But read carefully. Read carefully from the first word till the last word. And tell me again if there is a contradiction here, or you can see something that you can, uh, you can consolidate this observation with the theory. You read the statement and say, if f of x has a relative extremum at x equals c, and f prime of c exists, then f prime of c equals 0. If I go from the, begin from the end to the beginning, f prime of 0 equals 0, yes. f prime of 0 exists, yes. f, f of 0 has a relative extremum, or f of x has a relative extremum at x equals 0, no. But remember, this is the if. So this is the antecedent. It tells you that if there is a relative extremum, if there is a relative minimum or relative maximum, then the derivative equals zero. But we don't have that. So the condition if does not, we didn't satisfy the condition. Therefore, there is no contradiction, the JT. Okay? There is no contradiction, contradiction. There is a condition here. We did not satisfy the condition to begin with. So, so however, x equals zero is not a relative extremum. Okay, so here we need to write a note, and I'm going to write it in red, because this observation is very common uh, problem to students of calculus. So let's write a note in red here. We're going to say the following. We're going to say that g prime equals zero does not contradict Fermat theory. In this case, okay. the theorem does not state that if f prime equal, if g prime equal of c equals zero, then uh, g of c is a relative, is a, is a relative extreme. In other words, Fermat theorem is not if and only if statement. If and only if statement tell you that uh, if the antecedent happened, then the consequent, but also if the consequent happened, then the antecedent happened. Okay? Uh, 
if A happened, then B happened, and, only, and also if B happens, then, then A happens. That's if and only if statement. But this is, uh, the theorem said only if A happened and B equals zero, the derivative equals zero, then something else happened, but not the reverse. So that's why uh, there is no contradiction. We, we have a question about this part. All right. Um, actually, this will be page three. No, it was page four, actually. All right. Part C. Let's look at C. And in C, we have h of x equals the absolute value of x. Okay. Again, we are familiar with the uh, with this with the graph of this function. It's look like this. So what's the issue here? Well, the issue is at this point h prime of zero does not exist. We establish this fact because. Uh, the derivative or the limit coming from the left is not the same. The derivative, if we come from the left, is negative 1. The derivative coming from the right is positive 1. So they don't match. And we said that if you have a pointy function like that, a spiky function or something like this, then uh, the derivative does not exist. So, but we do, looks like we do have something, we do have a relative minimum here based at least on the graph. But Fermat theorem does not apply. Why? Why Fermat theorem does not apply here? Because the prime doesn't exist. Exactly. Okay. So those are the three examples that I want to share with you.